show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and Merry Christmas everyone. Today I will be booking the four horsewomen of MMA, that is Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir on the main roster of WWE. Now this video is kind of split into two halves. There is kind of a bit before WrestleMania 35 and then the main bulk of it happens afterwards. So very quickly let's kind of get ourselves to WrestleMania 35 and then develop the story from there. So we start after Survivor Series and Ronda has beaten Charlotte thanks to the disqualification and Shayna Baszler managed to retain the NXT Women's title at War Games 2 thanks in large part to Shafir and Duke. Now, not only this, but in this version of events, um, there isn't the triple threat match at TLC. Instead, Becky Lynch has been stripped of the SmackDown Women's Championship, and it will be decided in a ladder match at TLC instead. And she will not be a part of that match because she is still not medically cleared to compete, much to, obviously, her annoyance and the annoyance of pretty much all of the fans. Now, what that does is kind of put more heat on Nia to, in turn, kind of help Ronda with staying as a face character because, obviously, she kind of wasn't overly well received at the end of Survivor Series. So, at TLC, Ronda absolutely destroys Nia and everyone loves it. And in the ladder match, Asuka wins the vacant SmackDown women's title. And the following SmackDown, or a couple of weeks after, maybe just before Christmas, Becky Lynch is finally cleared to compete, and Paige kind of gives her first opportunity at Asuka for the women's title. Uh, she says she gives her an opportunity for that at the Royal Rumble, but Becky wants her belt back immediately, so she faces Asuka, but unfortunately is unsuccessful. So we go into the new year with Asuka still as the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Now, as we go progress to the Royal Rumble, obviously we have a takeover show there, and the kind of bits and pieces going on with Shayna, Jessamine, and Marina are kind of still an issue with Io Shirai, Dakota Kai, and Kairi Sane, as they were at the end of War Games 2. And this culminates in a six woman tag match at TakeOver Phoenix, and the face team kind of draw first blood. They specifically target Shafir and Duke because of their inexperience. But what is more telling are the women that actually enter the Royal Rumble match themselves. Um, namely, Shayna Baszler, Marina Shafir and Jessamine Duke. They all enter kind of towards the middle, around sort of 15 to maybe the early 20s. But quite near the beginning, around sort of 4 or 5, Becky Lynch enters. And we end up getting to a point where the final four of the second ever Women's Royal Rumble are Becky Lynch, Shayna Baszler, Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss. Now Baszler is eliminated first out of these. Um, Becky and Sasha kind of work together. But Alexa uses this uh, opportunity to kind of blindside Sasha and eliminate her. So it comes down to Becky and Alexa. And Becky Lynch wins. She gets the title shot at WrestleMania 35. And immediately calls out Ronda Rousey. That is going to be the match. She has decided she is facing Ronda Rousey for the Raw Women's title. So we kind of move on to WrestleMania 35. Again, on the TakeOver show the night before, uh, Baszler defends the title and is successful against, I guess, probably Io Shirai or Dakota Kai. Asuka defends her SmackDown women's title and is successful in retaining it. And Ronda Rousey faces Becky Lynch in, hopefully, the main event of WrestleMania 35. And Ronda Rousey is able to retain her belt. So... Now we move into the sort of main bulk of the storyline. We are post-WrestleMania 35. So what do we have on the Raw after WrestleMania? We have some NXT call-ups. Why not call up Baszler, Shafir and Duke? And Shafir and Duke have a tag match against Sasha Banks and Bayley. And 
With a little bit of help from Shayna Baszler, Duke and Shafir managed to win in their debut match on Raw. And then the following night on SmackDown, Sasha and Bayley come out as new SmackDown superstars and they have another tag match against probably the Iconics or someone like that and they immediately get their win back and kind of start fresh again on SmackDown. So what we will have now, you may notice, are the four horsewomen of MMA all on the Raw side of things and the four horsewomen of WWE on the SmackDown side of things. So they're kind of away from each other for the time being. Now the next pay-per-view is Backlash and Ronda again handily retains her belt. And on the SmackDown side of things, Bailey manages to defeat Asuka. We kind of get a bit of a repeat from their NXT feud when obviously Asuka toppled Bailey before Bailey moved on to the main roster and Asuka then dominated the women's division in NXT. Now the following month is Money in the Bank. And in the Money in the Bank ladder match itself, we will again have eight women, four from Raw and four from SmackDown. And on the Raw side of things, we will have Bliss, we will have Nia, we will have Naomi and Carmella. And they kind of came over onto the Raw side of things almost in an exchange for Bailey and Sasha. And there's also a bit of a, an issue between Carmella and Bliss because of the whole, well, I won the first and I won the second ladder match and I cashed in and was successful. So there's a bit of a kind of undercard story brewing between those two. And on the SmackDown side of things, we have Becky, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, and obviously no Asuka or Bailey because they're having a, a title match later in the night, a kind of Asuka's rematch for the belt. So we throw in somebody like a Sonya Deville or possibly even a Nikki Cross if she's been called up to kind of be with the rest of Sanity. That would be quite nice. Uh, but ultimately the winner of this match is Becky Lynch. So she has the Money in the Bank briefcase. So later on in the night, Bailey defends her title against Asuka in what is basically a war. And Bailey just about manages to win that match, but is pretty much dead on her feet. Now, obviously, Becky being a SmackDown star, the crowd are kind of expecting, ooh, are we going to get a cash in? But it doesn't happen. A little bit later on in the night, Ronda defends her title against. Uh, let's say Ruby Riot, why not give her something to do? And Ronda kind of fairly handily wins that match. She's not kind of out on her feet, it's nowhere near the same as the Bailey and Asuka match was earlier. And just as kind of Ronda is celebrating in the ring, that is when Becky Lynch comes out with the briefcase. She doesn't kind of charge down to the ring and try and blindside her, she doesn't allow the Riot squad to kind of jump Ronda afterwards and take advantage of that. Ronda is still fairly fresh in the ring and looking fairly confident and they're kind of staring each other down. Becky on the outside of the ring and Ronda inside, one holding the belt, one holding the briefcase. And <clears throat> there's kind of a moment between the two of them and just as the crowd kind of feels this about to burst effectively and as soon as Becky is kind of going to make her way into the ring to hand the briefcase over to the referee to start this match Becky Lynch is jumped by Shayna Baszler, Marina Shafir and Jessamine Duke and the match never happens so Becky has still got the briefcase she never manages to actually cash in so it's not an unsuccessful cash in the match just doesn't happen and Ronda's kind of a bit confused with this. She doesn't really know why the other three are there. They kind of try and celebrate with her in the ring. Like, look what we did. We just saved your belt for you. But she kind of leaves them to it. And as she's kind of exiting, they focus their attack more and more on Becky Lynch. And Ronda just kind of backs away from them. Clearly showing that she didn't kind of orchestrate that she didn't ask them to come out and do that she's not really got anything to do with them they're acting on their own 
Now, needless to say, obviously the night before Money in the Bank, there is another TakeOver match. And basically what is happening on NXT is most of the heavy lifting is being done by Shafir and Duke. Baszler's just sort of there, um, not really getting involved in any matches. They're kind of almost wrestling on her behalf, almost as a proxy. So they're getting a lot more ring time in NXT but she is getting the more ring time on Raw but they're just kind of there as backup and support just so that the general audience can kind of get to know their characters a bit more but they're having more time in NXT and at the Performance Centre just kind of refining what they're doing so that's kind of how that's going on and all this time Baszler is turning up with the NXT women's title uh, just kind of leading people to think well, what's happening to the women's division on NXT if their title holder is just showing up on Raw every week. So we move on to the sort of Raw and Smackdowns between Money in the Bank and Extreme Rules. Now Ronda kind of tries to call the other three out and is like I don't really get what's going on here. We're not a team here. I didn't ask for any of your help. But Shayna especially is like, come on, we're, we're champions here. We need to look out for each other. Don't forget as well, the four of us have history. We've got this bond. And ever since the four of us came here, we've kind of been looked down on and like not appreciated in the same way as the rest of the women's roster. Kind of like that we're outsiders and we're imposters and we shouldn't be here. And really, the four of us have only got each other. No one else in this locker room really cares about us, so we kind of need to look after each other. And Ronda kind of buys it a little bit. It, there's no real obvious union between the four of them, but the ice is sort of melting between them, and, and it's kind of a, well, if you stay out of my way, I'll stay out of yours, and we just kind of deal with our own situation, and, and that's kind of how that's left. Now, on the SmackDown side of things, Becky Lynch is obviously irate. She wants another shot at Ronda, basically saying, look, you were lucky at WrestleMania. You were even luckier at Money in the Bank. And if it wasn't for your lackeys, I would be the Raw Women's Champion now. But, put a pin in that, that can wait. Shayna, you orchestrated that. At Extreme Rules, you're mine. We're going to have an interbrand match me versus you in an extreme rules match at the next pay-per-view and that is in fact what happens ronda has another title match bailey has another title match and they both defend their belts and we get Shayna baszler versus becky lynch in an extreme rules match and again because of the duke and shafir element Shayna is able to win that match kind of just by the skin of her teeth with pretty much all three of them beating the holy hell out of Becky and she just finally goes down for the three but as they're continuing with the attack after the match Bailey and Sasha Banks kind of even the numbers and get a measure of revenge by taking out Shafir and Duke but Baszler kind of doesn't really get involved in any of that she manages to back away kind of still gloating because obviously she won the match so this then leads us towards SummerSlam. Now, not a lot happens on the Raw after, just kind of a bit of gloating mainly from Shayna Baszler. But the the kind of main focus of this is Becky and Sasha and Bailey kind of calling out the three of them and saying, bring it on. Clearly, you've got issue here with us. If you're going to go to these extremes to try and lay us out, then we'll see you at SummerSlam. Three on three, bring it on. Now, the following week on Raw, Shayna and Jessamine and Marina kind of, they accept that term. But they work for the whole evening and finally by the end of the night kind of get Ronda on side. Um, basically playing off the whole Ronda-Becky issue that there's been all the way since before Survivor Series. And they're like, look, this is our time to show our dominance. If we put these guys down now, we will no longer be just the MMA people that are kind of riding on the coattails of what we've done elsewhere. This will legitimise us properly within this company, within 
wrestling as wrestlers, not just MMA people that just happen to be here because of what we did elsewhere. And then this leads, obviously, the three on SmackDown to kind of have to talk Charlotte round. And in the end, it's actually Bailey that says to Charlotte, because she's still kind of being a heel character since that change um, at Survivor Series, if you agree to join up with us and we reunite the four horsewomen effectively of NXT as we were, if you join us, I will give you a title shot. If that's what it takes for you to be on our team so that we're four against four, I promise to give you a title shot for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship after SummerSlam. So Charlotte, because of that, agrees. So we have the whole really solid cohesion of the MMA four horsewomen and we have the not quite as cohesive four of the WWE side especially with kind of having to bribe Charlotte to join their cause. And then at SummerSlam, and this will be the main event of SummerSlam, the Four Horsewomen versus Four Horsewomen match. I realise that's five. There we go, four. Granted, this sort of match probably should take place at WrestleMania, but there's no way we can squeeze this in before WrestleMania 35, and I think it would just be dragging things out to WrestleMania 36, Unless you waited a hell of a long time to bring Shafir and Duke up. And by then, the crowd are kind of starting to get a bit bored of Ronda already. And by this point, she will have held the Raw Women's title for a year. So, mm, I think we need to kind of strike while the iron is still hot. And in this match, Ronda manages to kind of counter a bank statement. She rolls through... Gets Sasha Banks locked in the armbar and makes her tap out. The four horsewomen of MMA, sorry guys, but the name, the money, it kind of writes itself that way, unfortunately. They're not, if they're going to bring them in for a huge marquee match like this, they're not going to have them lose, are they? So, Ronda wins, and as the four horsewomen of MMA are celebrating... Uh, there is kind of a blindside attack all on Ronda and Baszler manages to catch her in the Kirifuda clutch and chokes her out and stands over her, the three of them sort of stand over her at the end, Baszler with the NXT title in one hand and the Raw Women's title in the other hand looking down on her. Now this then leads to obviously a feud between Baszler and Ronda and Ronda immediately calls Baszler out and wants a one-on-one -on -one match with her. Baszler agrees as long as that one-on-one -on -one match is for the Raw Women's title. And Ronda agrees to this as long as the match is in Hell in a Cell. After all, that is the next pay-per-view. It kind of makes sense. They lived most of their professional fighting career in a cage-like environment. Let's finish this right here in a cage-like environment. In the what is kind of billed as the deadliest structure within this company. Me and you. The other two can't then get involved. It will be a one-on-one -on -one match between the two of us in Hell in a Cell. And the week before Hell in a Cell, each woman has their own individual cage match. Just to kind of whet the appetite for everyone and just to sort of show the audience and almost show off to each other what they are capable of doing within a caged environment. Ronda has her match first and handily wins and then towards the end of the show Shayna Baszler has her match and outside of the cage um, we have Shafir and Duke. And just as Shayna Baszler is sort of on the verge of winning Ronda blindsides those two and kind of beats them against the outside of the cage just as Baszler is winning the match and gets one of them in an armbar and they're kind of screaming out in pain. Obviously Baszler is, uh, I'm trapped here, I'm stuck in this cage. How on earth am I going to kind of work around this one? Ronda manages to fight her way into the cage kind of fighting off officials and unlocking the door. But as there's a bit of a struggle there, Baszler uses this time to climb over the cage wall and escape just as Ronda makes her way into the ring. And Baszler kind of picks up her mates and they scarper 
with Ronda kind of then trapped in the cage as it's slowly raising. But by then, the other three have legged it. So we have the kind of culmination in this now. Baszler versus Rousey for the Raw Women's title in Hell in a Cell. And finally, Ronda Rousey loses and loses the Raw Women's title. Now, this is really because this is the only logical way I can see of her losing her belt to somebody equally as kind of dominating and also we have the other two kind of lending a hand there as well ensuring that Baszler loses and as well although Ronda is very well versed within this kind of environment so is Shane and Baszler and so are the other two as well and that's kind of why they end up getting the the one up over Ronda here then the following night on Raw William Regal comes out and effectively strips Shayna Baszler of the women's title. She officially now is kind of never seen on NXT anymore. The other two, depending on how they're doing, can kind of officially be on Raw as well and never be seen on NXT. And the NXT women's title is effectively vacated until that next TakeOver show, which I guess will be War Games 3, probably. So there we go, that is my booking of the Four Horsewomen in MMA of Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, Marina Shafir and Jessamine Duke on the main roster of WWE programming. We get Ronda versus Becky in a storyline that makes sense. We get to kind of rebuild Asuka a bit with giving her a title run and the same with Bailey on the Smackdown side of things. We end up getting a four horsewomen, four horsewomen match at one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year. We also get Shayna versus Ronda, which would be a nice feud as well. We potentially then get some infighting on the SmackDown side of things with Charlotte against the other three as well. Don't forget that Becky still has the briefcase, so is she going to come over to Raw and cash in on Baszler? Is she going to turn completely heel and cash in on Bailey potentially, over on the SmackDown side of things? So we're kind of opening ourselves up for many, many, many things happening on both brands and also giving us some matches that we haven't seen yet, some matches we definitely want to see in a way that just makes sense and is done at a time that makes sense as well an event that makes sense for the characters that we have. So what do you think of my booking of that storyline? Please let me know in the comments below. I will be back again soon with another bookings video. But until then, have a very Merry Christmas. I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.